Hello YouTube, thank you for tuning in to my channel. This is Azrael, the Angel of Melancholy, and in this video we are going to be talking about a Samhain blessing jar for love, protection, and peace, and uh, pros prosperity for the coming year. But before I do this, I want to share a poem by Ella Susan. It goes like this. Time of hag, time of crone, time of blood, time of bone. Hecate offers cold embrace. Spectre, wraith, and banshee pace. Wait for hollow's eve to fly. Wait till deepest, darkest to scry. This night the veil is very thin. Life goes out. Death comes in. Open wide to all the fear. Trust that from the darkest darkness here, life and light will rise again. So death goes out and life comes in. Isn't that very beautiful? Beautiful. Well, let's get started. Now, the concept of a witch's jar dates back thousands of years, usually in clay pots with lids. <clears throat> Anyways, they would place sharp objects uh, because your sharpness helps keep things away. So it was seen to be protective. Um, and they would probably mix bodily fluids such as menstrual blood or urine as well as uh, protective herbs and such. Okay, that is a traditional witch's jar. They would bury it in, in, in the yard or somewhere for protection. Same concept, uh, only we're gonna be using herbs and symbolism that relate to the home and this time of year. So a lot of the ingredients are specifically associated with uh, Samhain, and uh, Halloween, right, for this time of year. Let's get started. First of all, I already placed some ingredients in this little jar for demonstration for somebody else, but I'm gonna use it too. Hmm, smells like pumpkin pie. All you need is a jar, glass jar, uh, or a natural jar. Glass is more natural than plastic, but I just wanna put that out there. Um, doesn't matter what you use. You could even use a a clay jar that you make yourself. Doesn't matter. I just read like to repurpose because being thrifty is nifty. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to place this jar right, but right here. I'll just pick it up. It's off camera, but I'll pick it up when you need to see it. All right. <clears throat> I like putting candied ginger into the jar. Candied ginger, ginger, because ginger brings power, protection, and energy. Uh, kind of like a herbal crystal, right? Brings in energy, powerful. And it's candied because everybody loves a little sugar to sweeten the deal. So candied ginger adds the properties of sugar and ginger. What nice things to do. Into the jar. <laughs> now I want to take this point that the jar is actually symbolic, believe it or not. It has a magic property all of its own. You see, kind of like the witch's cauldron, where the witch's spell is given manifestation. This receives things. It's receptive. The jar is symbolic, kind of like a cauldron. It is feminine in nature. It receives. Okay? So, in any case... Just putting that out there. Cinnamon is an all-purpose herb. Just about anything you want, psychic abilities, protection, love, lust, passion, you name it, prosperity, this is the uh, herb for you. This is an all-purpose herb, literally. I like using all-purpose herbs. Into the jar. Now, Acorns and seeds. The best way to learn about uh, associations is to, well, perform magic and learn as you go, to tell you the truth. Far better than just studying and trying to remember as you cast a spell. It's always best to learn as you go. In my opinion, that's how I learned how to ride a bike. That's how I learned to do magic. I learned a spell and I learned what the herbs meant and 
once I learned to spell, I also learned the associations and so forth. And one of the key things I learned is that as above, as below, everything that, the, that something does in nature does spiritually for the witch. So, acorns and seeds. Plants want to survive, so and things eat the seeds. So plants make an overabundance of seeds usually. They come in the forms of like the pumpkin seed, which is also for protection and so forth, but they come in abundance. So seeds in general and acorns similar, which is a seed, it's always about abundance. And since it is literally the seed of the plant, it is reproduction. So seeds are always associated with protection, fertility. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be your reproduction or, or fertility. It can mean the fertility and the reproduction of other things that you associate it with. Abundance. So acorns go into the little jar. And pumpkin seeds. I put in the jar. Pumpkins are also used in protection, and they have an abundance of seeds. Same symbolism, okay? Protection, love, abundance, so far. And that's what we're going for. That's not what everybody needs. You know, if, if the world gave nothing but protection, love, and abundance, you wouldn't need anything else, really, would you? No, you wouldn't. Anyway, moving on. From your house, you dig a hole, get some dirt, and some roots. The dirt links the ritual to your household from your property. The dirt's from your property, if you haven't, 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 haven't understood that. Ooh, here we go. Ooh. Oh, over my laptop. Fuck. Anyway, hold on. That's what vacuum cleaners are for. But, so, we got some dirt. From your yard, which links the your property to abundance, to joy, and whatever, okay? Roots. Now, roots, no matter the culture, in my opinion, I've studied a lot. You might have to just take my word for it, because some of the information is kind of sparse. On roots. And what I mean by that is that if you type in magic associations of roots, you might come up kind of sparse. I mean, root vegetables, like carrots, fertility, and whatnot, you could find. But roots, just random roots. Random roots. Roots supply security and foundation to the plant it belonged to. Without it, it wouldn't be able to live. We're talking about the season of death and rebirth. So having a strong foundation, roots, from the symbolic underground death gives life. So the roots, adding roots to your, your jars or spells can hearken rebirth, strength, foundation, okay? Nurturing your spell or yourself into the jar. Here we go. Okay. Now, I also added apples. Apples are for healing, love, protection, really a lot. It's also one of those all-purpose herbs. However, why is it so witchy? Well, if you cut an apple widthwise, you get this. A five-pointed star encircled the pentagram. A lot of witches know this. A lot of witches don't. I just love the symbolism. I cut out the uh, seeds earlier for my demonstration, but I have that in the jar with apple slices. This is also good to leave. What I do is I, when I cut it, I, I put it with, uh, I wipe it down with uh, vitamin C uh, or citric with citrus, which could be from an orange, usually a lemon or a lime. I did, I did a lemon or a lime. And this keeps it from turning black, okay, or brown. 
This is great for ancestral altars as well. But the seeds, apple seeds, which will represent, again, abundance because it's a seed, fertility, and so forth. Now, you could also use nuts. Nuts, associate, nuts are associated with this time of year, and um, nuts are forms of seeds, okay? Fertility, protection, luck. There we go. And it's almost done. Write upon a piece of paper what you are specifically looking for. It could be an ass load of stuff. Okay, love, protection, healing, rebirth. This is technically the end of the harvest season, which is the end of the old year, preparing for the new year from of, of life. Okay, you go through a little season of death, which is usually in uh, like Yule, and then all of a sudden, you know, the coming of the sun comes in the middle of Yule. And... Things warm up, things come back to life. Halloween, Fawin, season of death, season of rebirth, preparing for rebirth. Now, in other videos, I, I, I put, uh, when especially dealing with spirit, I don't didn't put uh, a lot of credence on what you do with the paper. However, for the sake of prosperity, because in spirit, we're everywhere. doesn't matter which direction. It always leads back to spirit. But we're talking about kind of a, virtualistic theme here. So I'm going ahead and add this. Whenever you fold a parchment paper and you want something to come to you, you fold it towards you. doesn't matter which direction you fold it towards you, okay? If you want something to go away from you, like let's say it's unwanted attention from a would-be uh, self-proclaimed gift to man, gift to women, you know, an unwanted suitor, for example, oh, fold it away from you. Fold it away from you. Say it likewise, if you're in a grocery store and you're paying with cash, before you hand it to the cashier, fold it towards you. It's because you want money to come back. Anyway, so the things you want to you and this ritual fold towards you. Doesn't matter if you switch it this way, switch it that way. Just fold it towards you to bring what you want to you. Okay. Boom, fold it towards you. And put that in the jar. And last but not least, some liquor. Now, this is actually product placement. <laughs> Fireball. Cinnamon schnapps. I love cinnamon. Cinnamon is an all purpose herb. Again, I say to you, it's one of my go tos. Awesome. Now, alcohol is symbolic of spirit. That's actually why they call it spirits, wine and spirits. Alcohol is associated with the spirit. Alcohol also cleanses and fixes things. It has, it's an all-purpose, literally, it's almost an all-purpose thing. You can use it for blessings, hexings, you name it. And you don't have to buy human-grade, drinkable, consumable, human-grade stuff. You can actually go... See, they, they put a tax on this. What they do is they take the alcohol out of stuff that is drinkable or would be drinkable, and they add something toxic to it so you can't drink it. So the tax goes down. So if you want to be a thrifty witch, you could use rubbing alcohol that is not for human consumption. It does the same thing. It's just not for human consumption because they put something in it that you can't drink because it'll make you sick, and then they don't have to add the expensive price. Anyway. You put this in your mouth. This mixes with your, your being. You can also take a, a piece of your hair or something and put it in the jar. Everybody in the household that wants to be affected by this, put something of theirs in the jar. Spit, hair, liquor. And now I use choose this. Even if I don't put it in my mouth and spit it in there, I choose this because of all the aforementioned properties that it has. Spirit. And... Things before they manifest into the real world usually manifest in the spiritual world as above as below. So I use the symbol, uh, the symbolic element of spirit, because what I have bound on this earth will be bound in the heaven for you Christians. Wink, wink. Yeah, it's the same thing, different wording. And to this, with my spit, my saliva, my essence. Mm -hmm. 
<sighs> As I've gotten older, alcohol just tastes a bit. <laughs> Nasty. <coughs> I still love the drink, but I'm trying to quit. Oh, that's a foul state. Anyway, no, it's delicious because it's cinnamon. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there you go. Then what you do is you place the lid onto the jar. You could take a votive candle, which sits nicely on it, or one of those big long candles. Okay, let it charge, put your energies in it. Say some uh, incantations like, I ask for this, 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 this will, this will happen. I charge this with protection, blah, 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 okay. Now you could also, if you watched my video about spirit powder, you could also include that with ashes with your ancestors, because this again is Halloween. Now I have, I usually try not to let my videos run past 10 minutes or that much because the shorter the video, the more views. People don't want to sit down and watch something all day. This is already 16 minutes long. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Do this this year, and next year, dig it back up, plant a new bottle, or new jar. Have a blessed Samhain, or Halloween, depending on whatever you want to call it. But, bless you, and peace be with you.